Hey, what's up guys? Good to see you today. And uh, today I'm talking about happiness and um, joy. So I've been reading all morning, thinking and writing and studying and uh, trying to think about happiness and um, its connection to joy. And, um, you know, I still am just trying to figure it out, just trying to think about it. And I thought I would just turn on the video and and talk it through kind of where my brain is at and thinking about this. You know, when you think about happiness, you think about uh, something that you can't really control. That's what you think about. I mean, I think most people think of happiness as if everything is going right in my life, if everything is, you know, the way I want it to work out, then I'll be happy. Like it's, you know, just an emotion that we experience when things are good and uh, we feel good, you know, we feel uh, this sort of inner sense of peace and calm and satisfaction or contentment. And we tend to think of happiness as being more dependent on my circumstances. So if everything works out the way I want it to and every you know thing happens the way I hope, then I'll feel this, this experience. I'll feel this inner uh, sense of of uh of what peace calm serenity there's probably a lot of different synonyms that we could use for happiness uh where joy is often thought of in terms of you know um something that is more inner based where happiness tends to be described as something that's based on outer circumstances joy tends to be described as something that's based on on um, an inner decision of the will. In the Bible, you can see where you're commanded to have joy. You're commanded to rejoice. It's kind of weird to think like to command somebody to be happy because happiness we tend to think of as an emotional response to my circumstances and my situation. But joy is, is commanded um, to rejoice or to have joy um, it, it sort of gives the inclination that joy is um, a decision or is an inner reality, an inner reality of a person that is not directly related to their out external circumstances. So joy is something that um, a person has or does not have that can determine their level of happiness in any given situation. So maybe think about it like this, that <clears throat> if I have joy, which is a decision um, of the will, an inner reality based on some fact. Now for Christians, joy is based on the fact that God is in control. And since God is in control, uh, we can have a sense of joy and uh, no matter what our circumstances are. So <clears throat> if you have joy, then no matter what happens in your life, you're able to tap into a sense of happiness. If you don't have joy, then happiness will come and go based on whatever circumstances are happening at the moment. If I get what I want, I'll have happiness. If I don't get what I want, then I won't experience happiness. But if you have joy, then even if you don't experience what you would, what you would rather in this life, you can still have a sense of inner calm and serenity, which is happiness. So I went back and looked at the Webster's Dictionary of Joy and then I looked at it in the 1828 original version of Webster and it was interesting um, some of the differences uh, between the two. But essentially, joy seems to be something that is irrespective of our circumstances. In other words, it doesn't matter what's, what we're going through, what somebody said to us, what uh, challenges we face, that we can, in a sense, force ourselves to experience happiness. Now, 
So I was looking at several different Bible passages today that I was studying and, and reading and thinking about this, along with you know books and, and everything else, videos and everything else. Um, it's interesting how in Philippians chapter 4 that, that you basically see exactly what, what you see in those that write about happiness is that you can make a decision by where you place your mind what your, what your outcome, your emotional state is going to be. If you make a decision to rejoice and have joy, no matter what circumstances you face, you can have joy. That it is possible to be joyful no matter what your circumstances are. Um, and it's something that can be evident to other people. Let your gentleness be evident to all. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, joy is something that others can pick up on in your life. It's something that others can see in your life. Because, because everybody can experience happiness, but not everybody has joy. When you get what you want and you demonstrate happiness, that's what everybody does. But when you don't get what you want or people aren't treating you the way that you would like for them to or they're not responding to you the way that you feel they should and yet you still demonstrate happiness, it becomes evident to people that there's something different about you and that something different about you is that you have joy. So joy, I think at the end of the day, when I get to sort of the, the end of this study on happiness, I think I come back to this Christian virtue of joy, is joy is what you really are talking about. Because happiness is based on your circumstances and based on getting what you want and feeling the momentary um, lightness that comes from having your wants or needs met but joy is a decision of the will based on something greater than your circumstances and it's something that's evident to people and they see it in your life whether what because because your circumstances aren't what they ought to be when people see your inner peace and happiness in spite of the circumstances in your life, or in spite of how you're being treated, they will see that you are a person of joy. Um, in fact, the Bible even tells us to not let, not to be anxious about anything. Okay, so worry, fear, anxiety, anger, frustration. This is what plagues our modern age. Worry, fear, anxiety, frustration, um, disappointment, discouragement. These things plague our society. People struggle with worry, fear, and anxiety. And when you can, instead of experiencing all of that, now this guy, which I think he was a Christian, I'm not really sure, this guy says, shift your mind away from all those things that are causing that worry, okay? And, and there's value in that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, this guy, okay, this guy says, cast all your anxiety on him who cares for you. This guy says, the Bible says, um, don't be anxious about everything, but in everything through prayer and petition, present your request to God. So, for a Christian, that is taking everything you're worried about, everything you're frustrated about, everything you're upset about, and rather than focusing your attention on it exclusively, or sharing it with other people and talking it through with other people, it says, take it to the Lord. So make it a matter of prayer. So folk, if you're going to focus on things your thoughts on things that, that cause anxiety, frustration, worry, anger, dis doubt, despair, and all that. Do it in a way that is handing it over. 
handing it over to to God and thus letting it go. And then do not worry about anything. There's the second command, rejoice about everything or in everything. And then don't worry about anything. Um, that you will receive the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding. Okay. Um, then this verse in Philippians 4 says, to focus your attention on positive things. Focus your attention on positive things. Whatever things are right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Focus your attention away from the negative, the things that would cause you anxiety, worry, panic, dread. Be done with that. Hand that over to God and then focus your attention and then control your attention. Shift your attention. Shift your attention and your focus to those things that are right. Please. So you're in control of your mind. So you're going to control your attention away from the things that would cause you worry, stress, anxiety, and you're instead going to focus on positive things. Now this isn't positive things like, I want a new car, or um, you know, a beautiful sunset, although those things aren't bad. It's just, there's instructions here about focusing on things that are pure, noble, right, excellent, praiseworthy, those things, and to shift your attention away and then it's just after this where Paul says he's learned to be content in all circumstances. And there's the secret to being content in all circumstances. So here we boil it down, okay? You guys that have stuck with this video series on happiness, here we bring it all to a head. If your sense of peace and joy is determined by your circumstances, then you're not a person of joy. You don't have joy. Joy is not something that comes to you from the outside. It's not something that's external. Joy is something that comes from the inside out. So joy is something that you have uh, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of whether or not people are treating you the way you want to be treated. So it doesn't matter how people are responding to you. It doesn't matter whether it's sunny or rainy. It doesn't matter whether it's, um, you know, all the stoplights turn green. <coughs> Excuse me. Or whether, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. Joy comes from inside, and it's commanded. It's commanded to have it. Where are you going to get it from? You can't get it from yourself. You can't get it from the external world. You have to get it from a higher source, a greater source. Okay? So, when you have joy, it doesn't matter if all the circumstances are going in life the way you want them to, because... You can have happiness, or you can demonstrate what looks like happiness in every circumstance because you are tapping into that greater source of joy that never leaves you. It's always there with you, okay? So, when you start to feel overwhelmed with worry, anxiety, fear, anger, frustration, resentment, bitterness, the long list of nasty things. Um, you've got to do something with that. And for the Christian, that would be hand that over to God in prayer and talk it over with God until you can hand it over to Him. For those of you that aren't Christians, you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do about maybe it's talking it out with a friend or talking it out with you know someone close to you. Um, and then when you felt like, okay, I accepted the reality, I, I am in touch with reality, but I hand that reality to, to the, over to the creator, then I have to then shift my focus away from all the things that are causing me frustration, pain, and misery and shift my mind to whatever is noble, trustworthy, honorable, right, pure, excellent, praiseworthy, all that list. I have to focus my attention to greater things away from the frustrations, away from what's causing me pain and misery and, and my emotional state and all that, upsetting my emotional state and all that. 
and think about those things and it even says in the verse to put it into practice and through that process I learn contentment through that process I learn how to be content regardless of what circumstances I can have joy demonstrate happiness in whatever circumstances I'm in if I'll follow that practice okay good stuff really helpful been sitting here thinking about it all day reading about it writing stuff down but um i think that's a good place to end this video for today all right guys find joy live in joy be present to life i'll see you next time